Today's podcast sponsor is Hubert Engineered Woods. And I want to talk to you about zip sheathing and why we use zip sheathing. I know you've heard me talk about it on the podcast before, but I thought let's just lay it out in the simplest of forms. Number one, when I install it properly, I tape the seams, I liquid flash the seams, I manage for water with my windows, I do, I, I use their products, I don't have to worry about water. There are times when we install drywall inside of a house and we don't have cladding on the outside because a no-zip system is going to be waterproof. So that's number one. Number two, I can manage for air. So using zip system sheathing on the walls, my like last five houses we built were all below passive house uh, levels of air leakage. They were all below that 0.6 ACH 50. And we're not putting that much effort into air sealing. We're just making sure that we tape well, which we manage for water, we manage for air. And the last five houses that I've built all had zip R because that continuous insulation that comes adhered to the back of my zip sheathing that I'm already putting up and installing, now I have continuous R value that I get the whole R6 or the R9 or R12, whatever it is, I don't see building any other way. It works for us, it can work for you. Make sure you go to huberwood.com and check them out. And Huber, thanks for sponsoring the podcast. Welcome back to the Unbuild It Podcast. I'm your host this week, Peter Yost. And as usual, I have my good friend, Steve Basic, the architect. Hello. <laughs> and handsome Jake Bruton, the builder. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> and this week, uh, we're doing a second Q&A. We had some really cool questions come in, and we're going to tackle a couple of them. And by second, what makes he, a really cool question? Oh, uh, ones that appealed to me. Is that, how does that sound? And by second Q and A, Peter means like fourth or fifth. Yeah, that's right. I think because we somehow we called it Q and A too, but okay. it's not. It's the third or fourth. But we get good feedback from our listeners and viewers, right? And and uh, thank you for sending questions because yeah. that's why we have this content is because you sent the questions and, and we, the garbage questions we didn't use by the way right we only use the the top tier questions but the first one and these are really good ones because they're about the industry in general so we have but, really cool top tier questions to look forward to <laughs> aren't you happy <laughs> you agreed to host <laughs> uh, so the first one is uh what is pretty good house so i was at, actually doing a training and one of, one of the co-trainers was going on and on about Pretty Good House. And you could tell he was talking about it like it was a program. But since the people in the room were builders and architects new to high performance, they didn't, they didn't know. He, he assumed they knew there was a, that Pretty Good House was something beyond just two adjectives and a noun. And it's not. There's a whole. Why is he huffing? So I'm frustrated. Uh-oh. You're also really far away from the mic. I'm frustrated. And that's close better? and loud. So we should we go first to what is pretty good house and then let you vent yeah, your frustration? Fine. Go ahead. So what's pretty good house? Uh, I think of it as a uh, aw shucks version of passive house. <laughs> <laughs> no offense, I, Michael. I, 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 <laughs> no I no love offense. that. I, I'm delightfully surprised. <laughs> it's it's a building standard. Yeah. So there's a pretty good house dot org. Right. Yeah. There's um, uh, all kinds of green building advisor blogs on Pretty Good House. And then there's a brand new book um, written by written by. Let's see. Uh, four author authors, Michael Maines, Dan Colbert, Daniel Colbert, uh, Emily Motram and Chris Briley, Chris Briley, Christopher Briley. Yeah. So um, and that's hot off the presses, isn't it? I believe so. But the pretty good house was, yeah. Not at the end of the press, so I wouldn't know. You're Are they really pressing. hot when they come off? I don't know. <laughs> You're being a little bit literal. <laughs> uh, so on Green Building Advisor, there's plenty of discussion about, yeah, what if you don't want to go to passive house, but you want to make sure you hit the key elements of getting it right? <sighs> Probably managing energy and moisture with equal intensity along the way. Is this going to be one of your complaints about labels? Yeah. Okay. All right. So now that we've set such, such good base of what pretty no, good I'm house is. No, I'm not going to talk now. I want to talk more about pretty good house. Go ahead. I want to listen. I want to carefully listen. 
No, we we, we want to hear why you're frustrated saying, with Pretty Good House. Not saying anything. You're not going to bait me like that. <laughs> Wait a minute. You just said that you were full of frustration, and you're going to. Doesn't you're gonna, mean I want to talk about it. Just no, this is a podcast. Oh, I didn't Steve. realize I was married to you all of a sudden. <laughs> this, <laughs> we're going to have feelings that we're not allowed to discuss. <laughs> People want to hear what you have no, to say. No, I'm not going to discuss my personal feelings. It's not about what we want. It's what our viewers want, <clears throat> our listeners. Well, look at him sympathizing with the viewers all of a sudden. Mr. Social Media. <laughs> How does this turn out to be okay. about me? What is it? Let's hear it. So... I'm frustrated because when are we going to become an industry without labels? Like, okay, Passive House isn't good enough. Let me create my own set of labels and we'll call it Pretty Good House. <coughs> what if I said maybe Pretty Good House? It, that's still too strict for me. I'm going to build the almost good house. <laughs> the almost good house. Yeah. Or the above code house. So I, th this right. is a so you've this is sort of a philosophical question about our building. Well, industry. the problem is Every time we draw a line in the sand, we kind of, I think we lose sight of what we're actually trying to do, right? Because what we're actually trying to do is elevate the building industry. So to elevate the building industry means we have to kind of unify, become one, and have a uniformed target, mm -hmm. right? So Passive House isn't a uniform target because there's a lot of builders I know that don't even know it exists. So never mind targeting it pretty good house and, and all this stuff is good i get it but the problem is is that when you start talking about this stuff we lose sight of what we're really trying to do and what we're really trying to do is take someone's budget and someone's dreams and marry them with good sound professional decisions made by the builder and the architect and whatever consultants to develop a matrix of a house that is the perfect solution for them. Do you think about these programs the same way you think about the code? I mean, isn't the code just trying to get everybody on the same page? No, because the code, all the code really cares about is a minimum life safety standard. Like, people aren't going to die if we build the house this way. Well, right. yeah, but the, the code now includes elements related well, it does to have some building science. safety. So yeah. we have some health, we have some comfort issues, et cetera. So it is expanding that way. Yes, it's moving in that direction. Um, but it's just like how many labels, like we have LEED, we have Passive House, we have this green building initiative, we have that pretty good house, we have, you know, all kinds of stuff when I just sit there and say, why can't we just design a good house based on these decisions? Well, to play a little bit of devil's advocate, it's easy for you or easier for you because you've had 20 years of experience. You've worked under Joe Stebrick and Betsy Pettit. So you're, you're pretty confident in your ability to take the budget, take the client and the decision in, include the essential yeah. principles that are needed to not get yourself in trouble and to deliver things like comfort, durability, and Yeah, because quality. there might be a function of aesthetics that don't allow me to quite get to that level of the label. But that doesn't mean it's necessarily a bad house because there could be a handful of components of decision making that exceed that label, right? So in the end, I'm kind of averaging out or better but I didn't, I won't make the label. Yeah. If you will. Well, and I, you know, to, to now sort of jump onto your side of this uh, situation, I, the, when I was working as co-developer of the lead for homes program, it was like, everybody's going to end up chasing points anyway. But the, the, the uh, U.S. Green Buildings lead programs have really moved the industry, right? So they're, so that's always like, well, we need these programs for market transformation. We need to, create sort of common goals and yes people are going to chase points but they're going to learn a lot along the way too so chasing points is still going to put you at a better ending point than not and and it's difficult to participate in any of these programs without learning more about how buildings work so i i can't stand them either they drive me crazy because people want to hang their hat on it sometimes they're even a little bit cult-like um but Do the passive house people being cult like, no, what say I didn't you. say passive house, I was just talking about programs in general. Sorry, I heard the passive people. house people were cult like. 
<laughs> That's wow. okay. If you say it twice and I've never said it, it doesn't change the fact that I didn't wow. say it. So Jake hates uh, you hate passive house people <laughs> along with the military. Bring it on, passive house nerds. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I can understand and I can definitely appreciate what those gentlemen and lady are doing. I can totally appreciate it. Here, here. They're really trying for something noble. I get it. I get it. But every time we do kind of a set of labels, you divide the industry into those that will do, those that won't do. Right? Instead of we should be an industry of we're all trying. And Yeah. But there's plenty that aren't trying. And yeah, and there's probably always going to be plenty that aren't trying. Yeah, yeah. So whether you have labels or not, I just, I don't know. Labels are okay. How about we just discriminatory say in my view. Um, those that are interested in a program that has good recognition of the relationship between building science and energy efficiency – a pretty good program about that is to take a look at the pretty good house program. We, the, the elements of it, we basically <coughs> agree with, yeah. right? Yeah. And they're they've informed, done good great work. informed starting points and goals. And if, and if you're not reaching passive house standards, but you want to make sure that you get the right combination of durability, comfort, energy efficiency, the pretty good house represents a version of that. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Good. Very so di- very diplomatic, Peter. Yeah. Well, that's what Peter is Switzerland. <laughs> Mister, it depends over here. <laughs> Can't take a stance on anything. You well, said it depends. depends. I thought you were just calling gonna... him Mister Depends. No. <laughs> <laughs> See, what I was going to say is there will come a time when I want you to speak much more carefully about the word <laughs> depends. <laughs> All right. Speaking of which, for the next one, I think I have to put my glasses on. Okay. Yeah. So this is related because I get this question all the time. Um, I would like to know how do I go about finding a high performance builder? Oh, I get or, that question all the time. Or or where can architect? I find a good architect? <laughs> Besides calling you, is that what you're saying? Yeah. So okay. So I get once a week. Once I a live week. in so Jake, X. Has a, Jake has a measurement statistic here. I, I get once a week. I live in Northern Ohio. Do you know any builders that? do the like-minded stuff that you do in my market. And I'm just going to blanket statement. Probably no. The builders that I know that do the kind of stuff that we do are in a couple places. Like I don't have the whole country covered. So if you live in Northern Arkansas, I don't think I can help you. However, my starting point for everybody is see if there's a HERS rater or a BPI rater in your market and ask them to start out with. And I had somebody say, what about talking to the lumberyard? And I thought about mm. the lumberyard that we buy stuff from. No, they're going to recommend whoever builds the most houses in the market. They're mm-hmm. going to send you to the guy that puts 50 houses in the ground a year. And spends a ton of money with them. Yeah. I, and maybe Building that's... inspectors might be a good choice. On, that's maybe, me. but that... There's a little yeah. bit more personality that comes into play there because you could be building a really like you could be doing passive house or a pretty good house and exceeding all the standards and doing stuff that's really comfortable and durable. And you could be a real dickhead and the inspector's not like you too. The yeah. BPI guys tend to be a little more diplomatic, I think. And I don't know if you remember, Steve, when we were at Building Science Corporation, one of us, I think maybe both of us went and did uh, building science trainings for uh, code officials. Oh, my gosh. I mean, there were people there that were asleep from the second slide because they were so yeah, uninterested. Continuing in, education credits. Yeah. So that was I was really disappointed. But I've come across building inspectors that are real sources of knowledge, real sources of good references. Um, it kind of depends on how seriously they take their job, like a lot of other things. Um, so, so that so that was my that's always my recommendation. Find a HERS rater or BPI in your market. And chances are, if there's not one, you're going to have a damn hard time if you don't know somebody that's built what you want. So do you basically say, go looking for one of the builders that I work with? Is that pretty much your answer or? No. No? No. I said we we could find. I I mean, with my network, I can pretty much find decent builders. I mean, I can just go to, for example, like Huber or Sierra Pacific and say, who's your rep in, you know, Raleigh, Durham? Hmm. 
and then call that rep and say, hey, I'm looking for a builder that has the capacity to do this, this, so, and that. So that's a different route. You went, you're going through manufacturers to find Well, because they get an idea of who's yeah, building yeah. good houses and who can listen. Because they're trying to do somewhat the same thing I'm trying to do, right? Get out there, promote good building mm-hmm. um, practices. And so they know who's listening, who isn't listening, who's paying attention, who isn't paying attention who builds well, who builds not so well. So I had the same conversation and I sent them sent for a while. I sent people searching for a Huber rep thinking at least the person, the builder's more worried about water. So hopefully that's a better thing. And I got word back from somebody who had talked to the Huber rep in their market and the Huber rep had sent them to somebody that was using Huber. And that guy said, oh, no, we we're just using it on that job because the clients wanted it. We don't I don't think that's wasting money. And I was like, mm, we might yeah. have to take a slip now. But you have the ability to like interview and interact discreetly, get the information and then we go and talk to the builder. Yeah. So. So. Um, but those are simple approaches. Yeah. Well, so another one Call is somebody else and leave uh, me alone. Martin Holiday in 2019 wrote a blog called the Green Building Community Board. And he said, we're going to try this on GBA. And it's just going to be a list of, uh, and it's a list that the Green Building Advisor community builds, right? So he, he did a starter list and he said, this is here for everybody to help build. And it, it's listed by region to try to get people connected with high performance building professionals. Are you on that list? I was blacklisted. I can see that. Really? I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, that I, I haven't looked at the community board lately, but Martin's that he said, Hey, let's just give this a try. And there's a string of comments about, Hey, this is a great idea. Let's, you know, try to build a a resource on the website. So there's that. And then I got so tired of getting this question. I thought, well, maybe what I should do is give, uh, give a list of questions for clients to ask potential architects and, and uh, builders. So I wrote up this thing. It's six questions. And I, the idea was this is a draft document. Let me buckle up. I was going to say, do we get to guess what some of the questions are? His favorite color on there. (laughs) Favorite ice cream. Yeah. If your favorite color is green. Favorite ice cream. no, you see, see, I took the time and effort to make this, and all you're going to do is cut it apart. Yeah, that's not that's, what this is about. that's kind of the point of yeah, this okay. whole friendship right. thing. Here. I should have. It's just I a just crap on it. If I didn't know that, I should be shot. Right? Yeah, Peter, okay. I'm I'm being very attentive here, please, and respectful. Okay, so here's here's the question is list that I built, one? and I'm hoping to build on it. So is this number one? I'm going to start with number one. Okay, you're going to do them in order after that too. <laughs> If, if they're not in order, I'm never going to get through this list. Do you attend any of these educational conferences? Building Energy, Better Buildings uh, from Efficiency Vermont, Home Performance, the new affordable comfort events, JLC Live New England. And notice I've tuned this to the Northeast, but the question could read, what are the uh, uh, high performance educational, educational conferences in your area? And do, does your builder architect attend them? Any comments? I was hoping that JLC wasn't on there and I could be like, well, I'm out. I don't get to be a yes on this list because oh. I I, the other ones I haven't been to. Yeah, interesting. Um, okay, so do you want to add to that, Steve? No. I think seeking outside educational opportunities is a And on a national a level, I guess it could be EBA, you know, yeah. the Energy Environmental Building Association. Um, okay, question number two. You're going to like this one, Jake. Are you a Building Performance Institute certified professional or do you have a working relationship with one or more building professional, uh, a BI, BPI professionals? So the Building Performance Institute is a pretty widely recognized uh, building science based that looks at both energy and moisture relationships in their work. And BPI, you can go to that website as a, as a consumer, type in your zip code and do a draw a circle and if you can't find what you want you draw a bigger circle so that's a pretty good resource question number three save that for us. pete's resource pete's resource end. yeah what high well, can i deny being a professional seriously building professional you're not well, a, not a bpi professional oh right nor but, do i want to be one no but you work with folks who are bpi certified correct Yes. Probably. Probably. No, keep going. Don't Question number three. Right. What high performance building 
slash building science trainings have you completed? Anything by the Building Science Corporation. EBA houses that work. Building material supplier sponsored high performance building events. Um, there's a building performance supply or high performance building supply in Portland, Oregon, Portland, Maine, and they sponsor high performance trainings like T.W. Perry did yep. in the mid east, uh, mid east, the mid Atlantic. Wow. Take a uh, breath. Heat Spring, which was that online uh, training for high performance building. Um, yeah, might have to look that up on the internet. I don't know that one. It's still working. Um, do you have a building assessment form or process that you use? Do you guys, either of you have a building assessment form? Uh, you can say that you use mine. I don't use yours because <laughs> I didn't know you had one. I do. <clears throat> I have a, a mental checklist. I do not have a form. I'm not that organized in that way. We'll put that on your to-do list. Yeah. Steve? No, you got no, no you, I know what you do with your clients. What, I do homework. At, that's exactly right. But that's not a should, building. That's a design inquiry. If you're looking for a high-performance designer... Ask them if they give homework. Do you think? Yeah. Okay. We might run through. I might. I might do that question different. I don't know. Yeah, I don't like. I'm I'm critiquing that one. I don't like the word assessment. What building information resources do you regularly use in your work? Fine Home Building, Journal of Light Construction, Green Building Advisor, the Building America Solution Center, the Unbuilded Podcast. I have to add that to the list. I didn't want to be self-serving. But the Building America Solution Center is a really good resource. Yeah. Yeah. Um, last question. What types of building... Is that on the internet? <laughs> no dessert for you tonight. This is, you're being impolite. We're going to you know, take away your goodies. What types of building performance tools do you use in your work? Hygrometer, moisture meter, infrared camera, blower door pressure gauge, psychrometric chart, or the psychrometric phone app. Jake, I think you could say There's probably... There's quite a few of those there, yeah. No, you do, I think, all of them. I think you have all this equipment. So you've expanded your tool belt to include trickle of tear down my cheek. Yeah, I've entered the twilight zone. Steve, we're going to have to have an intervention with you. <laughs> This is about raising the industry. And Welcome all you've the world. done is express disdain or lack of interest. In Welcome to the world of building science. You've now entered the twilight zone. <laughs> anyway, so this was a starter list. We're going to put this on the website associated with this podcast. And we, like we want to build the Green Building Community Board on Green Building Advisor, we want to take, I, I'm, I'm, encouraging people to give me questions that we can add to this form. So we'll make it a download available on the website. Did Why I don't you just ask me what question it was, I should ask? So you never asked me. We look forward to you, to you going to the website <laughs> and adding your questions to this form. Oh, I want to talk can, about them right now. You can try now. Right. If, you want to, if you want to add so something So if, if I had to tell a homeowner what to ask, there's a bunch of questions. One... You would ask your architect, do you have a water management strategy when you design houses? Do you have an air barrier strategy when you design houses? Or what are, what are your strategies for air barrier, for water management, layers. and thermal control and vapor? And I like these questions like is if the person goes, what? Right. You're not. <laughs> exactly. You're not. You're not necessarily <laughs> trying to get. What they Their are, strategy. Just, you're trying to get. Mean. Do they like? Do they look okay. at you like a deer in the headlights, or do they rattle off an answer? This is the Steve Basic that I love, by the way. Thank after you. after you're done all your bullshit, you really do <laughs> cut to the chase. That's one of the questions you should be asking, and then the same question for your builder to get the mm -hmm. same reaction. Because what you're trying to vet is the quality of the builder and their knowledge. What's yeah, What's right? funny just, is just just because I go to the EBA conference every year, not I mean. 
it's it's good. But just because yeah. I go there every year might mean that, hey, I, there's some people there I want to see every year. Right. So I go there, we party, we go out drinking, the hell with the conference, but that doesn't make me a better builder necessarily. <laughs> when you go to the conferences, so you, you go there drink. just to drink. <laughs> well, you go there and catch up with friends and go out. And yeah. So what's whatever. really funny is if I answered the phone and started a conversation with somebody and they started off by saying, can you tell me about your control layer strategies? Even though I am well versed in what we do, I would be so blown away by the question and on the spot that it would still start with, uh, <laughs> like I didn't know what the question was. Like I would be so like, what? How is this the question that you're asking? Like, yeah. how did you come up with this? It's hard to do it so that it feels like a natural thing, but I still think it's useful to. Well, it doesn't to, have to be the first question out of the gate. It's, hey, how do you operate? How do you bill? Yeah. <clears throat> what do you think the time frame is? And, you know, let me ask you just a few specific questions. Have you ever I'm, slept with one of your client's and, wives? And, <laughs> <laughs> See? Oh, man. You know, you're, you you're just as incorrigible as he is. <laughs> Right, but it could. But, it, be, but you do it so pleasantly. It yeah. could be the eighth or ninth question sure. yeah. on the yeah. list. But hey, you can, can you slide them? And in. it could be just hey, can you talk to me a little bit about what your strategies you know are what? for water management and air control? And do you know what I like about that approach? If you start with, here's how we want to find how you're different. What we're trying to do is give make you. high performance part of all, all the questions that we asked. I, I like that. That's very clever. See that? And you can ask the builders the same one. Yeah. And what after that? You said you had multiple questions. Do you have any more? Well, that was like five right there. Sure. Um, yeah. You know, one of the questions people always ask is that it's not so much when they're talking to the builder or architect, but when they're talking to references, like what should I ask references? One of the questions I always tell them to ask is ask how the builder was the last three weeks of the project. Mm, like, was were he still they in, there? Was he still there? Was he in a hurry to get out of there? Was he making excuses for, I can't, I'm at this other job. I'll be there next week or I'll do this. Or were they very attentive in, in closing out the job? Now so, I want to, I want to, Ask off topic, but on the topic of references, we've quit put, passing out contact information for references. It it's always rare. felt like I was pestering people. Occasionally, I still get people I'd ask and say, "Hey, do you have like two or three people I can give a call to?" And just and it's like if I come up with three phone numbers for you to call, they're going to be people that are going to say nice shit about me. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to be anybody. That's yeah. question. What's so funny it's is a falsity. Like, I always think I have to have this. I've only had two clients in the whole time I've been doing this say, D "Can you give us some references?" So, and that was easy to do, and it worked real well. I said, "You do realize they're going to be people that I handpick." Yeah, you know for. Well, and and I've had a couple side. ask and then not call. It was just like they wanted to see if I could come up with references. Well, and it's but, like, but, what are we doing? But you know what else happened? I give you my mom's phone number. I the to, the two clients that this happened with, they said, "What was what we were really looking for was, did they like working with you?" Like you know, did, yeah. did you did you do a good job? You know, they didn't say did like you work with them again. Hey, there you go. And they said the client was just very supportive of you should work with this guy because he knows what he's talking about and he's a pleasure to work with. So that's what they're looking for. Um, what's interesting well, is I was going to say I was going to flip that around and say, but the danger also with references is in today's world of social social media, right? It's not probably uncommon to have a client go awry and just say, you know what, he really pissed me off. Let me go write a bad review. Yeah, but I this I think people if, if they're savvy they can. Um, but what I was going to say is that it's interesting that the first question was about. The pretty good house program nowhere in these questions did any of us think to say what programs do you participate in you need lead for homes yeah. or you know that didn't occur to me but i guess does that have a place in the list yeah i mean i think it's um i would more lump it in with are you familiar with any of the current building um parameters or whatever yeah. like passive house yeah. and yeah, this that's and that. And can you speak to any experience yeah. with those? Okay. I'm going to add that one. Because Good. it doesn't mean that you, because, because I know architects and builders out there that have never built a passive house, but that doesn't mean they couldn't. Yeah. I've never built one. They've don't have the, op they haven't had the opportunity. yet. So when we post the download of that 
interview questions that I've done. Do how will people add to those? I guess just comment. Uh, we probably will just have to do that as a like respond with an email to us. Yeah. Okay. Well, they could the always post it in the comments. They, they could, uh, and then we could pull in. The, yeah, you the, post it in YouTube. the comments on YouTube. That'll work. Let's do that. Okay. So Pete's resource for this question: How do I find these high performance building professionals? Is we, we're going to post a downloadable questionnaire, and then we're going to build on it. Yep, and there'll be a link below the YouTube video uh, to get to our website directly to Pete's uh, to Pete's document, so you don't have to go searching for it on our website. Go to the YouTube, watch the YouTube video, like and subscribe. Wow. And on that note, if you're listening on iTunes, please leave us a five-star review. It's how other people find us. It's an organic growth button for us. Uh, obviously leave a good five star review and say nice things. Don't just say, Hey, it's five stars. They asked us to make a five star review. So we're making a five star review. Excellent. Till next time, gentlemen. Thank you. Will, for will there be one? There's always a next time. Wah, wah. We, we, I miss you so much. There's always going to be a next time. Have a good day. Have a good day. Have a good day. <laughs> Have a day.